What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. We're not yelling today. It's Sunday. Okay. On Sundays, we do not yell. On Sundays, we go to brunch. We drink bottomless margaritas. Sundays are for getting divorced. That's what Sundays are for. We're bringing bike divorces. Everybody out there get divorced right now. Literally right fucking now. If you're watching this video, go get divorced. But because, but because, Why Are You Yelling? Podcast with my dear friend Steve is going to be a bi-weekly show. I figured on the Sundays that I have open now, we're going to continue not to yell, but we're going to start doing some obscure mock drafts, okay? So whatever weird league types you may have, whether it's a 19-man league, a four-team league, a 12-team league with four starting tight ends. I've been trying to push that cause for years. No one takes me fucking seriously in this game. Whatever you have, whatever kind of uh, league settings that you have that you want to see me do a mock draft for, drop that in the comment section. Today, we're going to do one of my favorite drafts on Underdog. Okay, If you're not already signed up for Underdog, Underdog Fantasy, the link to download the app will be in the description. It's the best place to do your drafts this summer to prep you for the upcoming season. We're going to do a six-man draft, okay? A six-man draft. These leagues are buy-in, okay? This is going to be a $3 six-man draft. And there are consequences for the shitty drafting that you might do. So on this website, on Underdog Fantasy, you can do three-man drafts. You could do six-man drafts. You could do 10-team drafts, 12-team drafts, whatever, right? To prepare for your league size. But there's money to be made in all of these draft sizes, okay? So I want to do a six-man draft today because I think there are advantages to be had. There are strategies to be had when we are approaching a six-man draft, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So to fill up the draft, let me uh, let me go capture the screen. So this is what Underdog Fantasy looks like, of course. Let me minimize the... Uh, bookmarks up here so we could see the full width of the screen i'm gonna drop into the discord that we need five guys like i need a fucking hamburger boom and we'll throw it onto twitter if we need more people that don't jump in i expect this to fill rather quickly um so again underdog underdogfantasy.com all of the leagues that you play in are buy-in leagues okay and you can play in as little as three dollars to buy in And this is the sharpest ADP in the world because all of the buy-ins are real. So everyone is competing for real money, which means the drafts are as realistic as possible. And when you deposit $10 on Underdog Fantasy, when you deposit $10 on Underdog Fantasy, you're going to get $25 free on top of that when you use the promo code BDGE, okay? Why is literally nobody coming in? It's usually filling in about five seconds. Did I post the wrong link in here? All right, I guess we're going to have to go to the Twitter world. Twitter. We need five for a six-man underdog draft. Is nobody awake? Is that is that what's happening? It's pretty early right now. It's 9.50 in the morning. It's not that fucking early. Boom. Threw it on tw- to Twitter. Make sure you're following me on the, on the Twitter. It's at Nick Ercolano, which happens to be my name. Thank you, mother, for that name. Okay, whatever. Um, so we'll be waiting for this to fill up. I'm not really sure what's happening. There we go. We got two. We got three. We got four. Oh, we are ripping, baby. We're waiting for two more people. So uh, tomorrow we'll go, we'll go back to my regularly scheduled live stream of a 12-man draft. So those of you that play in regular leagues, the 12-man leagues, there will be good analysis for those leagues incoming to your face holes. But for right now, we're doing a six-man draft, and we have filled. Let's go. We've got Robbie Bobby. We've got the Glizzy guy. We've got Stack Me, Zebo, and Michael Murphy. Let's get this motherfucker started. Oh, I'm the 1-1. One, one. I love that. I love that. In a six-man draft, we have 45 seconds until the draft kicks off. These are 30 seconds per pick, so there's a fast draft and there's slow drafts on here. As more of you guys have probably gotten into fantasy football and we've kind of diverted our audience over to dynasty drafts, you've probably played with slow drafts before where it's eight hours between picks. And that's personally my favorite thing to do on Underdog. I only do these fast drafts when I'm doing content for you guys. 
because it's a realistic mock draft, obviously. But the slow drafts are beautiful because, again, when you deposit 10 bucks, you're going to get a free $25 on top of that. You go through the link in the description down below. It's going to take you right to your app store where you download the app onto your phone. Don't matter if you got iOS, you got Android, whatever the fuck ever. And uh, when you use promo code BDGE, when you throw 10 bucks in, they're going to give you a free $25 on top of that, okay? And that means you have $35 to play with, and thus you could enter about 10, about 10 to 11 to 12, math doesn't work this early on a Sunday morning, slow drafts and just have them going at all times. So you have a pick every 20 minutes. You don't got to, you don't got to uh, fret about anything. All right. Boom. Let's go with Christian McCaffrey at the 101. So when I'm looking at a six man league, okay, what's the difference? What is the difference between a six man league, a 10 team league, a 12 team league? Well, here's, here's the difference. Think of it like uh, when you're in a six man league, you're, you're playing against the elite of the elite, right? Everybody's roster is going to be filled to the nines with the best players available on the draft board, right? It's not really about depth. Think about think about a six-man league being like the Olympics, right? Everybody's Usain Bolt. So you need to be the Usain Bolt of the Usain Bolts, right? If you are in a 12-team league, over the long run, if you have depth, if you have a, a well-rounded team, you will start to weed out the worst teams. So when I look at a six-man league, a smaller league, right? The smaller, the smaller the league, the more positional advantage you need, okay? And that's why we're starting to see guys like Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller go off at the one four one five. I do not uh, oppose that whatsoever because everybody's team is going to be so stacked. Because everybody's going to have three to four top 20 running backs. Everyone's going to have three to four top 20 wide receivers. You need to have, you need to look at the positions that have a positional advantage to begin with. Okay. So I will likely be avoiding wide receivers until the the 12th, 13th round, to be honest with you. And then just go with like nine of them because you're still those eight to nine wide receivers that you're going to have on your team, even though it's later in the draft, because it's a six man draft. Uh, those guys will still be top 36 wide receivers almost all of them will will be top 36 wide receivers so when um when you have them inserting your lineup right this is best ball so for those of you that are new to underdog best ball automatically starts the best players at each position in your lineup glizzy god great fucking pick with austin eckler there did he go uh no he went derrick henry first i really wanted austin eckler because he's got unbelievable upside which we'll talk about in a video this week but you want to, so you want to, you want to look at the positions and you want to say, okay, which positions have top end positional advantage? Because I need that. Because again, you need to be the Usain Bolt of the Usain Bolts. Everybody's going to have an elite team. Everybody's going to have a really, 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 really good team. What's going to separate you is having the top end elite players that actually make a positional advantage. And you could look at a few different, uh, you can look at a few different positions. The first thing I'm looking at is running back, of course, right? Because I got to see Mac. Uh, the guy that I think has elite upside at the running back position outside of the guys that are left right now would be a Cam Akers. Okay. And we look at George Kittle is kind of a difference maker there. So I'm going to go with Cam Akers and I'm going to go with George Kittle. And you guys know I am not a fan of George Kittle in like the third round of 12 team drafts. But the fact that we are playing in a smaller draft, you need to be able to separate yourself at the positions that actually have a separational advantage. If that makes sense, okay? So we look at tight ends, definitely have that, right? There's a monster drop-off after the first three or four elite tight ends. Running backs, of course, there are league winners in that category. And then I think quarterbacks actually make a lot of sense in this um, in this format. So, for instance, I was thinking about drafting Devontae Adams there because, again, I'm operating under the assumption that Aaron Rodgers is going to be bite and he will be in Green Bay. So if that's the case, then... Devontae Adams actually is one of the very, very few wide receivers that give you a positional advantage there. So I would go with Devontae Adams and I would stack him with Aaron Rodgers. But you look at the quarterback position and we're seeing a little bit of a, a swing in things here, okay? We're seeing a little bit of, of, of the changing of the guards in terms of late round quarterbacks. Do late round quarterbacks still present uh, the advantage at the position? And I would say no, because we have so many good top end quarterbacks right now we have Mahomes we have Allen Lamar Jackson Kyler Murray Dak Prescott Russell Wilson and then you can debate where the tier kind of drops off there <clears throat> but there's definitely a teardrop right it's not where everybody is kind of producing at the same exact level which is what makes late round quarterback good to begin with um 
So drafting an early quarterback makes a little bit of sense, in my opinion, because you get the positional advantage that wasn't there in previous years at the quarterback position. We're seeing a lot more athletic quarterbacks come into the league. We're seeing a lot more, <clears throat> excuse me, we're seeing a lot more uh, rushing upside from quarterbacks. So when you start to drop into like the Najee Harris tier, like, yes, Najee Harris can be a um, can be an RB1, right? He can finish as the RB11, RB13, whatever. But there's not going to be much of a difference between Najee Harris and like the middle RB2s, in my opinion. So you have to, this is the draft format. The smaller your league gets, the more you need to be looking at the top end positions and where there is relative positional advantage. Antonio Gibson gives you monster, monster upside. So you're looking for the upside. You're looking for guys that can actually give you an advantage position to position. We went with Kyle Pitts. And honestly, I'd be looking at Patrick Mahomes, and I might go with a double stack here of Mahomes and Kyler Murray. The only reason I would think about not doing that is because I can't stack them because Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey are off the board, and DeAndre Hopkins, I believe, has already been picked. Yes, he has. So we're going to look back at the running backs one more time, see what we have here, because you start two running backs and you start one flex. And I do think Joe Mixon has the capability of finishing as a top five running back this year. So I'm going to go with Joe Mixon, and we're really just going to sit on wide receivers, and we're probably just going to start drafting them uh, in like the eighth, ninth, tenth round. And I'm actually going to take, I'm going to take Mahomes here, and I'm gonna, and I'm probably going to regret not taking Mahomes and Kyler, because I think Kyler's going to go off the board before my next pick. But fuck it, I do want a separational advantage at the quarterback and the running back positions because I think those are the top end. Uh, positions if you don't get a guy like if you don't get Kelsey or Waller uh, Kittle was the next best pick in my opinion there and uh, and I think he is a tier above I mean, listen I could be wrong on Kittle like I don't love the offensive situation for him because they have Brandon Ayuk they have Debo Samuel if Trey Lance goes under center they have a running quarterback which just means more rushing attempts for an offense that already has a fuckload of rushing attempts going to the running backs um, so 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 that's what I mean, dog. I'm, I'm hoping Kyler falls back to me here. The only things that sucks about taking Mahomes and again, like a Kyler, is there's no one probably in a six man league that you actually want to stack with them. Uh, I almost think it, it might make a little more sense to grab like a Lamar Jackson. I think this is a, a good situation where I have Kyler Murray ranked above a guy like Lamar Jackson, the Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson. He's my quarterback too. But because the pieces here, especially Lamar Jackson, right? The only guy you'd want to stack in a six man league with Lamar Jackson is Mark Andrews. And Mark Andrews is at a position that's a premium, right? The tight end position in a six man league is is where you want to have an advantage. Um, so he's a good pick here. Kyler, like the only one you'd stack with is DeAndre Hopkins. I didn't get him, so it's tough to do that. Dak Prescott, I can go with the CD Amari Cooper stack. Russell Wilson, you can go with the Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf stack, right? You could do all those things. So I think they make a little bit of sense as a situational tiebreaker here, depending on what you want to do. I just don't think. Listen, we we've done the we've done the math very very many times, and uh, the wide receivers just don't separate themselves after like the top two or three guys, right? And most of the time, it, it you don't have one or two guys completely separating themselves from the pack like Devontae Adams did last year. So I just think the wide receiver position is still one to uh, to wait on here. Because again, like I'm going to draft eight of them and like four of them are going to be guys here where it's like Thielen, Higgins, Johnson, Devontae Smith. And out of all those guys, you're going to have a bunch of top 10 weeks and you'll be fine at the position. I see a tight end still there. I might go with the Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews stack here, which might not be the smart thing to do. What the fuck so ever, but I'm not really that smart of a person. Okay. So actually... I would probably rather go with, ooh, who, where do I go here? If I take the two Dallas wide receivers, someone's going to snipe Dak Prescott for me. So I'm going to make the safe play here, and I'm going to go with Dak, and I'm going to stack his ass with who you guys like more, CD or Amari Cooper. We're going to do an episode soon of, uh, of, of drafting the correct teammates. We're going to go team by team with guys whose ADPs are close. Um, 
man, C.D. Lamb is now three spots ahead of Amari Cooper. I guess it's probably to do with that foot or ankle news that kind of came out about him. Man, Amari Cooper's splits with Dak in the beginning of the year last year were just so enticing. The first four games of the year, I'm actually going to bring this up for you guys. I know people like to talk about, uh, what is this? Bad gateway. Man, the problem with a lot of these sites, just from a business branding perspective, like, there's too many options, man. Simplicity is key for consumers. There's 95 dropdowns, all with 95. Like, what? I look at this. I'm in fantasy football every single day. I'm using tools. I'm doing research. I'm using every fucking possible thing on the internet. And I get anxiety just looking at this. Player Stat Explorer, Weekly Stat Explorer, Lineup Optimizer, fucking Algorithm Maker, GPS. Like, dude, this is way too fucking much. Way too much. Man, there's so much opportunity to be a good business in this space, and a lot of people are uh, throwing it away. I love the tools on this website, but, like, it's fucking right there. If I, if my the URL I have saved in my bookmarks doesn't go straight to it, there's problems. There's problems. Okay. Uh, Amari. Amari. This is Rotoviz, by the way, if you couldn't tell by the big ass fucking logo in the top left. Amari, Amari, we want to go last year. We want to go to the four games that Dak was a full time starter. Here's what Amari Cooper was averaging in the first four weeks last year 21.3 PPR fantasy points, 9.3 receptions, 13 targets, and 100 receiving yards per game. That is legitimately wide receiver one overall type numbers. That split with Dak is menacing and the volume I'm, I'm going to do uh this week my two main videos are going to be uh running backs with elite upside and wide receivers with elite upside and we break down the dallas wide receiver group in fucking depth and uh, i think you guys are going to like that one a lot okay so we're almost on the clock yeah the quarterback run is happening Let's see i probably even could have waited on uh oh nope never mind i couldn't have i was going to say russell wilson and and uh, what's his face stack? But yeah, now the tight ends are gone. The top ones are gone. Not a lot of great wide receivers I love. We've already taken our two quarterbacks, so we're high end at that position. What do you guys think? I think in terms of upside, Miles Sanders definitely has upside. Uh, I think his risk is is very fucking real there. Yeah, now is probably when we start hitting the wide receivers. So we'll go with Mike Evans. Mm, damn, see, I w now I kind of wish I waited on quarterback. Just to go with the Tom Brady stack. I might actually go with a fucking another. I might I might take a third quarterback. And say fuck it. Because our running backs are so are so healthy. And stealthy. Yeah, you know what we're going to do? That's what we're going to do. We're going to go with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And make sure that we get Tom Brady in like the 17th or 18th round. That's not going to happen. Someone's going to take him way earlier than that. But you all get the point. I just think it's good to have like a 35 spot in your quarterback. Um, in your quarterback slot every week and we will certainly get that between Mahomes, Prescott and Tom Brady and that's a beautiful stack because in the weeks that Evans, Godwin, Brady go off that's going to get me like 90 points for that week just from those three players so we'll talk about some other later round tight ends that uh, that we like to target here based on our based on our stacks and shit once we get a little bit later into the draft but we're into the ninth round Here's the draft board so far. I wish I could. Let me see. I need to figure out a way. Oh, I have an idea. Let's see if I could do this. Bear with me for a second so I can get the board up on the screen. There is a way. Let's see. That's not what we want. You guys definitely don't want two of me. Nope, definitely don't want that either. All right, fuck it. Fuck it. We'll just throw this, the board on the screen every once in a while. Oh, uh, so my Miles Sanders at the 10 1. I really like that. That's a good group of running backs there and a group, good group of wide receivers. He's got one of the top four tight ends, too. Well done, Mike Murphy. Well done. Good squad there. Let's see again. You wait to the 10th round, and you've got the Thielens, the Higgins, all those guys there.
I like Brandon Ayuk. I think he's got very legitimate upside. And, uh, and we'll take Thielen. He'll have enough touchdowns where he becomes a wide receiver one every other week or so. This is what I mean. You go with you go with the positions that have high end advantages early on in 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 your drafts. Mahomes, C Mac, Acres, Mixon, George Kittle, because you know you could use all of your middle late round picks on wide receivers. Draft eight of them or so, and uh, and you'll have a bunch of top twelve guys each week that that get thrust into your lineup. But when you have the weeks that have the high end running backs, right, the guys with a ton of fucking upside pass catching, three down workhorse, goal line kind of shit like these three guys. That's really the positional advantage there at running back, and that's where you break the fuck away. I got to make sure Tom Brady don't fall off the board from me. Who do we like at running back? Who do we like at running back? Who has upside? Man, I guess, like, I got to get a little bit higher on Miles Gaskin. I know I've been fading him for a while, but he was also going at the end of the fourth, uh, early fifth round, and now he's dropped into the middle of the sixth round. And if we're looking at it objectively, like, I feel like I got to get a little bit higher on a guy like Miles Gaskin because um, because they just simply added nothing to that backfield. I thought they would add a veteran. I thought they would draft somebody. I thought they would... Um, you know, bring on someone, even sh- someone shitty like Le'Veon Bell would make his, uh, would make his outlook worse. I do think Malcolm Brown's going to be way more fucking annoying than most people give him credit for. Uh, there goes Miles Gaskin off the board, so it didn't even fucking matter. Didn't even fucking matter. Ooh, Judy. Judy. Ooh. Oh, Robbie, you motherfucker. You're a loser, dude. You are a loser. You don't even have anyone on Tampa Bay on your fucking team. You're a fucking loser. You're a loser and I hate you. And I hope your fucking Sunday is sloppy and not surgical. Alright. Well, we took the Tampa Bay stack, so this guy's a fucking asshole. Let's go with Judy. Big Judy guy this year. Um... Okay, and we also have Dak, so we can grab the double stack there and grab Gallup as well. So now we have Cooper and Gallup, and we just have to hope CeeDee Lamb uh, does not become the number one wide receiver in fantasy there in Dallas. Otherwise, this team is fucked, and that's probably going to happen. So fuck me. Fuck me, right? Fuck me, right? Oh, man, this this is not going uh, as I thought it would. Okay. Welp. Um, if for some reason you are enjoying this video, you know, you could you could subscribe to the channel. It's great because we're doing a real mock draft, a 12-team mock draft tomorrow. And uh, we'll be doing regular player analysis videos throughout the actual week. I can't believe I took Jerry Judy and Michael Gallup before Josh Jacobs. Like, that makes no fucking sense. I shouldn't have done that. But we're going to hit the running backs hard. I think... Uh, I think Kareem Hunt's a nice pick here. And I think Chase Edmonds has a lot more upside, too, now that he's... Um, I'm surprised Chase Edmonds keeps dropping. I really am. Because he was going in that Miles Gaskin range where he was a fifth-round pick, and now his ADP is 78 overall. Uh, and I was probably... I probably had something to do with that because I had been very, very much off of... Um, Miles Gaskin... Or uh, Chase Edmonds, sorry. Uh, Chase Edmonds. And been telling you guys to fade him, but the reports are coming out that, like, it's only a competition in name, right? Like, it's going to be Chase Edmonds' backfield with James Conner. I still think James Conner is definitely going to be very involved. But uh, the fact that he keeps dropping all the way down here, you know, pick 78 makes him a, a, a decently good value, man. I, I, I don't hate Chase Edmonds. And now we're seeing all the fucking, the, the way people really feel about Travis Etienne. You know, all you fucking frauds talking about Travis Etienne, great pick in the fourth round. The more and more I do these best ball drafts, the, the further I see his ass dropping. Yeah, stack me. Yeah, stack me. You fucking take that. See what stacks you got on your bullshit ass team. Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Nice stack. Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown. Another great stack. Good job. Good job. Robbie, you're a fucking idiot. And I hate your guts. Your team stinks. 
I'm sure you're going to take Chase Edmonds right now, and I will lose my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah, idiot. Idiot, who are you going to stack with Curtis Samuel? All right, now we take Chase, and do we take another wide receiver here? Uh, there's no one I like enough. See, I would have taken Antonio Brown there had I got Tom Brady before, and that would have been the ultimate fucking stack if we had Evans, Brady, and Godwin. Ugh, ugh, you disgust me, Robbie. You disgust me. You probably didn't brush your teeth last night. Yeah, let's go with Kareem Hunter. Fuck it. Fuck it. So now we got five running backs. We'll probably round out the team with two more wide receivers and a tight end. Because we have, what, 16, 17, 18th round pick? Yeah. Um, I kind of hope Robert Tunyon falls to me. Again, I'm, I'm going to continue to draft Robert Tunyon. His ADP is way too fucking low in these drafts. Like, listen, I was not for Tunyon. I think that a lot of his uh, a lot of his fantasy production was obviously touchdown based, and he had a he had I, I tweeted this out the other day. Let me see. Let me pull it up. In Green Bay's game versus Atlanta last year, Robert Tunyon had twelve percent of his total receptions, seventeen percent of his total receiving yards, twenty seven percent of his touchdowns, and twenty point four percent of his fantasy points. Um, that's a lot to come from one game, of course. Mike Murphy, nice snipe again. The thing with Tunyon, though, is if Rodgers is back, one, first, they didn't add fucking anything to the receiving group. I know, Amari Rodgers, sure, cool. Um, but Tunyon's also, like, the exact profile you look for in a breakout tight end. Like, I don't think it was luck. I don't think it was just straight volume. This dude is exactly what you look for in a tight end. Four six three wheels, 76 percentile uh, athlete. Like, just look at this. Look at the... The athleticism there. He's an inline tight end, 235 pounds, 6'5", so he's got the size to be like a speed guy. Uh, I think he's good, man. I, I, I think he's just a good player. Like, look at the efficiency. Yards per target, number three. Yards per outrun, number seven. Catchable target rate, number two. Uh, catch rate, number one. True catch rate, number one. Like, everything in terms of efficiency across the board is really fucking high, which means he's probably a good player. And I think Robert Tunyon needs to be drafted much, much, much higher. So good pick by Mike Murphy there. Another horrible pick by Robbie Bobby. What else is fucking new? What kind of wide receiver action we got left here? Tyler Boyd's a guy. I've been, uh, do I want to stack someone with Mahomes? I hate I hate Miko Hardman, bro. I really, really hate the pick of Miko Hardman. Oh, boy, we're running out of time. We'll go with Boyd here just to get our one of our picks in. I don't want to do this stack. You're forcing me to do it. Like, I put McCole Hardman on this team, and it's one of those, like, uh, one of these players doesn't fit. You know, it's one of those situations where someone uses that corny joke. One of these things doesn't belong. But, like, Michael Hardman does not belong in this in this realm of players. So we need to take another tight end. And let me grab it before it goes off the board. Look, I'm, high, ugh, I'm not high on any of these guys, really. But, actually, I'm higher on – I love Jonah Smith. Fuck it. I love me some Jonah that I'm not even going to get. Don't trap somebody. Fuck you, Raheem Mostert. Fuck your face, underdog. Fuck. 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 All right. Well, that fucks me in the ear hole. But I still think we're going to be able to get Jonu here. If not, my next favorite tight end is probably... I could have went with a fucking Gronk stack, too. See, I could have had I could have had Brady, Godwin, Evans, Brown, Gronk. How fucking electric would that have been? Anyone in here in the um, anyone in here in the uh, in the NFT game? I bought one of Gary V's NFTs, V Friends. I got it for 0.5 ETH, and I just I'm I'm getting offers like every every day at a new level. Um. Mike Murphy. I bet you have Devontae Adams, don't you? No, you don't. It's a good stack with Tunyon. Um, I bought it at 0.5 ETH, and I just got an offer for 3.5 ETH. But I've had them over four before, and they just I just keep I just keep getting them slick, slick offers. Come on, Jonu, fall to me, baby. Fall to me, baby. Yeah, stack me. Take take me, Cole Harbin, you loser. You weren't like you're not stacking him with anybody. Terrible team. Just so bad. It's the worst team I've ever seen. 
could have auto picked every pick and still wouldn't have been as bad as this. Jalen Waddle shaking my fucking head. All right, let's grab our second tight end, Jonu Smith, breakout player of the year. Boom. And that's the squad. That is the squadron. Let's fucking go. They usually have the projections of who they project to win the draft. What do we got? 17, 37, 37, 30. I feel like Fetty fucking wop. 37, 36. We're above Robbie for sure. We're above the Glizzy God. Oh, am I projected to be the number one team? We're above Stack Me. Let's go. We're above Zebo. Mike Murphy. Knew it. Knew he drafted a great team. He's the only one above me right now. Of course, I'm obviously shitting on Robbie Bobby. All right. Uh, yes. So that is it for today. If you guys want to jump in best ball drafts with me again, uh, go download the underdog app. It'll be the first link in the description. It'll take you straight to your app store. When you deposit 10 bucks, they're going to throw $25 into your account on top of it. Free $25 just for using the promo code BDGE, y'all. Literally, you're going to have $35 into your account to play with. That is 11 best ball drafts plus two McChickens, as long as you don't live in Manhattan, because they are certainly not a dollar. Honestly, you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't. be able to get like two McChickens for the $35 that you'd have in your fucking account out here. Um, but that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Again, make sure you subscribe. We'll do a 12-man mock draft tomorrow. I love you all. Enjoy your fucking surgical Sundays, except for uh, Robbie Bobby.